and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Barjo. And I am Darren. Today on the show, we save the world from monsters and falling Tetris blocks, and both are pretty dangerous, you guys. Yes, heavy objects falling from the sky should not be underestimated. First, we master the teetering constructions of tricky towers. <laughs> Then after that, we'll tackle a horde of frosty beasts in I Am Setsuna. If a frosty beast were to fall from the sky, well, I dare say that would be even more dangerous than a tetromino. And more messy. You. All right, well, Darren, how about some trivia? Affirmative. Activate your brain power, spawn wings, because it's time for Darren's challenge. <laughs> Today, I'm asking you this. What are the names of the three team leaders in Pokemon Go? Answer at the end of the show. Mm, I know the team names, Valor, Mystic and Instinct, but I don't know the leader names. Who are they? Oh, think on it, Bajo. Right, now it's time for Goose's gaming picks. Hang on, Goose is on holiday, so who's going to do it? Oh, oh me, 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 Calm me. your circuits, Darren. You've already had a go. It's Bajo's turn. Oh. Oh. All right, this doesn't seem like it'll be too hard. So here are my gaming picks. Here's a pick of me playing a video game that I'm enjoying. Here's one that I'm not enjoying very much. Here's one that I am very much not enjoying. And here's one that I think is slightly okay. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Bajo. Gaming picks is supposed to be about gaming news, not actual pictures of you gaming. Let me do it. Yeah, Darren was better. I was better. Uh, okay, all right then. Well, uh, I guess I can find some news. Uh, one second. Ah, all right. <clears throat> so, gaming website Eurogamer has been given loads of details on Nintendo's upcoming NX console from a trusted source. The new console will apparently be a completely portable handheld console similar to a tablet with detachable controllers on the side. And it will have a base station that can let you dock it with a TV and play games on your TV. It will also apparently use cartridges which means it's unlikely to be backwards compatible with Wii U games on disc. And because it's portable, it's unlikely to be as powerful as current modern generation consoles. Eurogamer estimated it would be slightly more powerful than the PS3 and 360, so that's not bad, but it might not be as powerful as the Wii U. Of course, all that is unconfirmed at this point, and we'll have to wait for official details from Nintendo before we know for sure what the NX will truly be. And now for some more pictures. Here's me playing another game. Here's another one. Yeah, I like that one. If you've got a gaming pick yourself, please send it in here. Great job, Bajo. Thanks, Hex. Oh. Now it's time to get our block on with Tricky Towers. Tricky Towers is a physics-based puzzle game from developer Weird Beard. It's kind of like if Tetris met Jenga, and it uses the familiar Tetromino building blocks we all know, except with a few interesting twists thrown in. There are three main game modes here that will all test your building skills. Survival, puzzle, and race. Survival mode includes a set number of bricks that the player has to stack correctly. If a block falls off the tower, then you lose a life. Three strikes and you're out. Correct, Darren. There's also puzzle mode, where your aim is to fit all the assigned blocks under a laser line on the level. There's usually only one way to fit the blocks here, and if you touch the laser at all, it's game over. The final game mode is race. This is where you'll have to build your tower as quickly as you can up to the finish line within a certain time. You can play all of these game types across a variety of levels in a series of single-player stages. These stages do ramp up in difficulty, starting out with simple puzzles before moving on to more complex challenges. All these different game modes were great, just spicing up that Tetris-like block stacking was a refreshing change. Although I did find that the difficulty does ramp up fairly quickly. I mean, even in the Apprentice stages, I found myself really struggling to finish a tower in race mode within the given time. Yeah, I found that too. It is easy to learn though, so you can just jump in and get stuck into the game. The other thing I loved here was the visuals. Everything is so colourful and the animation is delightful, and it's all strung together by a fun, upbeat soundtrack. Yeah, I thought the music was great, Bajo, and those adorable little wizard characters are so cute. Oh, 
affirmative. Uh, but beware, as these little wizards can be friend or foe. The wizard on the left side, the friendly one, will give you spells through each round to help you construct your tower. Uh, for example, magic vines to help stabilise your blocks, or a spell to slow down time for you. But on the flip side, the enemy wizard will try to spoil your run by dropping a fog so you can't see what you're doing, or he might even throw a chain on your current block so you can't rotate it. Yeah, those pesky dark spells, they can ruin your tower really quickly. Yes, dastardly. There is multiplayer, which you can play locally or online with up to four players, and I think that is definitely the best way to play this. Oh, totally, Bajo. Uh, we couldn't test out the online capabilities at the time of review, but we did try some local multiplayer. Here you can take on friends in any of the game modes, and you have the ability to cast spells on your enemy. And it can get pretty intense. Affirmative. It's always an interesting choice to make, whether you play to your strengths and buff your own tower with a light spell, or you can take the more mischievous route with a dark spell, which will set the opposition back in some shape or form. I went with the dark spell every time. I just liked watching my opponent struggle with what I threw at them. Overall, though, I'm not sure if this game has long-lasting appeal. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's definitely a fun experience, but not the sort of thing you want to play for long stretches. Mm. I did have a good time, though. I thought the unique twists on the old Tetris formula were pretty clever. I'm going to give it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, I thought the game was quite charming, and you should definitely play it with friends. I'm giving it three and a half as well. Hey, guys, which one is your favourite Tetris block? Oh. You know what? I'm all about that sweet tea block. It's so versatile. And... I love tea, the drink. Oh, well, I'm quite partial to the square block myself because it looks just like me. Oh, yeah, I see that, Darren. I like the S-shaped block because you never know where it's going to go and where does it go? It goes nowhere. Hmm, uh, well, anyway, uh, it's time for another strategy sir session with Goose and me. Oh, oh roll, roll the tape, Lee. It doesn't fit anywhere. Please. <laughs> I feel I may have just invented a new sport to keep the peasants happy. Do tell, Sir Goose. Well, you have two teams. They take a head of lettuce into a field and they soccer it up and down this soccer field and they try to kick it in between some soccer goals. I'm thinking of calling it Gooseball. Oh, I'm sure peasants will love it. It sounds almost as interesting as another ball game called Rocket League. Huh? It seems like a simple enough game, but by combining elements of soccer, ice hockey and car racing, it is deceptively tricky to play well. Yes, indeed. One thing to keep in mind is the dangerous power of speed. Rocket League lets you use a turbo boost to propel your car at phenomenal speeds. With boost gauge refills littered about, it's tempting to spend every moment of every round hurtling along as fast as possible. But this speed comes at the cost of fine control. It's all too easy to shoot straight past where you need to be. Better to use restraint and the occasional tap of the handbrake to ensure that you're always exactly where you need to be. What's more, you can only win if everyone on your team is where they need to be. This isn't a willy-nilly game of free-for-all. It requires teamwork. Thank you, peasant. If everyone is on offense, that means no one is guarding the goal, and you're wide open. So communicate with your team, or better yet, play with your friends. Generally speaking, you should only attack if you have a full boost gauge. You need it to zip about in the air. If you're out of boost, stick to defending until you recharge. Yes, and while hitting the ball is important, hitting other players' cars can be just as useful. Time your boost just right, and it's even possible to destroy an opponent by hitting them head on. They'll respawn three seconds later, but sometimes that's just enough time to set up a goal, my lord. Ultimately, you can only get better at Rocket League by practicing. Only by playing lots of games will you develop the judgment you need to know when to venture out and seize the ball, and when to hold back and defend. When waiting for a match, be sure to take advantage of the aerial, striker and goalie training modes. And all things being equal, the team that masters aerials masters the game. It may be the hardest thing in the game, but it's instrumental and it's also the most fun. Now, my lord, how about a game of Gooseball? Uh, splendid idea, sir. Oh, but could you explain to me, what does offside mean? Ah, well, that's the thing, sir. 
Nobody knows. Oh. Mm. Ah, Rocket League, isn't it just the perfect game? Or is it more of a sport? Well, oh, now you two need to be good sports and go to the Ask Spawn Point desk. Oh, yeah. Help the spawnlings. Ah. Vroom, 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 vroom. Okay, let's get into some of these questions. And first up, we have this one from Nightmare Wolf, who is in Melbourne, Victoria. <laughs> Hi, GGSP. This is a Pokemon Go question. Do you know some areas where Fire-type Pokemon will be? And can you tell us where some areas for all other Pokemon are? P.S. Hex is super awesome. P.P.S. Bajo is awesome. P.P.P.S. Darren is a super noob. <laughs> P.P.P.P.S. Cheese sandwiches are super awesome. Hex, do these. <laughs> Bye. Well, Nightmare Wolf. <laughs> From what we've seen, you can find most types of Pokemon pretty much anywhere, but certain types do tend to favor certain areas. Yeah, so the game actually splits up the real world into various biomes, which certain types of Pokemon favour. But thankfully, you don't need to be in a fire to find fire types. Yeah, apparently fire types are more likely to appear around farmland, residential areas and warmer places like the beach, for example. Hmm. Typically, if you follow common sense, you can figure out where certain types will be. So water types are clearly going to be found closer to water. Grass types favour grassy fields or parks and gardens and that kind of thing. Yeah, but the vast majority of Pokemon will spawn in cities and residential areas, so you don't have to go anywhere too special to find most of them. Hmm. But let's move on to this one now from Drag and warrior who is in New South Wales. Hi, good game, SP. My complaint is about what Hex said. Hex, you said to the person that said, how do you spawn Hero Brian on Minecraft? And you said he is not real. You are wrong. Every update on Minecraft said remove Hero Brian. How are you going to stop yourself from drinking from the new cup now? Big fan, you guys. There you go, do this. I rock and roll. Well, Dragon Warrior. <laughs> I think you'll find that I was still right about Hero Brian. They just write that they've removed him as a bit of a running gag. I mean, otherwise, it doesn't even make sense that they would remove him in every update. You can only remove something once, right? Not if it's a curse, Hex. They can hang around for ages. You get the curse removed and it doesn't work. The curse just comes back. It's like trying to get a chocolate stain out of a white T-shirt. It never really works. No, Bajo, it's not a chocolate stain and it's not a curse. Hero Brian isn't real. I mean, sure, there are mods and stuff that can kind of put him into the game, but the curse of Hero Brian and all that creepy stuff that he supposedly does is just a silly old story. You can even call Darren if you want. Well, maybe I will next. Maybe I will. I'm going to. Hello. Hey, Darren, is Hero Brian actually real? Negative, Bajo. He isn't. Really? Really. Mm. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, you're welcome, Bajo. See? Yeah. Okay, I concede. <laughs> Good. All right, well, we have another complaint here from um, Burrito that just came out of the microwave, Josh, uh, who is in Shoalwater, Perth, in Western Australia. Neato. Burrito? Hi, GGSP. On one of your shows, you said that there wasn't going to be a Disney Infinity 4.0, but you were wrong. And I also have proof. I searched up it, and it says there is going to be a 4.0, and there is Deadpool and the X-Men. Darren is a noob. Bajo, do these. Burrito out. Ha! Well, burrito that came out of the microwave, Josh, I guess just like with the story of Herobrine, you simply can't trust everything you read on the internet. Yes, they were working on Disney Infinity 4.0, so there's a lot of information out there about it, but it's never coming out. They definitely announced that they were closing down the studio and stopping production on any more Disney Infinity. Why don't we just double check with Darren Hex? <coughs> Better to be on the safe side well, than the sorry side. Hello. Hey, Darren, they cancelled Disney Infinity 4.0 and are shutting down the studio making it right? Uh Really? Really. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Bye. Ah, you're welcome, Bob. Well, there you have it. So let's move on to this one from Question Mark, who is in Punctuation in New South Wales. Yeah, that's clever. What noise would a question mark make if you met it in the street and said, hey, what's up? Mm hmm? Mm. What about an exclamation mark? <laughs> what about just a full stop? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Checks out. 
What is that comic style game where you play as an elephant and you have to collect peanuts? I think it was a platformer and you reviewed it last year. Well, question mark, hmm? that's straightforward enough. The game was called Tembo the Badass Elephant. Indeed, and it's available as a downloadable game on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And that was made by Game Freak, the guys who make most of the Pokemon games, wasn't it? Yeah, indeed it was. And no doubt right now they're getting ready to release Pokemon Sun and Moon at the end of the year. But let's move on now to this one from Tim Tam, who is in Foodland in Victoria. The land of food. Mm. That's where all food comes from, you know? It's true. <laughs> Hey, GGSP, why is there so many Just Dancers? And why do they come out so early? P.S. I am a dancer, so that is why I like Just Dance. P.P.S. Can you review any Just Dance? Ta. If you do not end with sir, I will send an army of Tim Tams after you. Mwah! <laughs> Hang on a sec, Hex, I don't think we should answer this. I don't know about you, but I think I could take on an army of little biscuits. Like, what are they going to do? Melt on my fingers? Stain my white shirt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just seems like a bit of an empty threat. I would just eat all of them, and then, you know, I'd be happy, because yeah. it'd be a delicious snack. So, that's that. <laughs> but as for why there are so many Just Dancers, well, I guess because people love to dance, and people keep buying them. As long as there's a market for them, they'll probably keep making them too. Mm, I love to dance, dance, dance. Also, it seems like a relatively easy game to make. They just have to add some new songs and dance routines each year, and it's done. Mm. As for why they come out so early, I'm not exactly sure what you mean there, but I'm guessing you mean why does Just Dance 2017 come out in 2016? And, well, I don't really know. Mm. Why? Mm. Hmm. Why they do that? It's like sports games, I think, Hex. You know, FIFA 17 comes out in 2016. Oh, That's yeah. always how it has been. Yeah, but but why, Barger? Well, because they, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe they just got it wrong once and now everybody just decided that's how people should do it. Oh, yeah, maybe. There's got to be a better reason, though. Maybe we should call Darren. Why don't we get Darren on the phone? Mm. Better to be safe than not safe. Hey, Darren, how come sports games and Just Dance games and stuff like that all have their 2017 version release in 2016? Oh, there are a few reasons. Uh, one, it's for marketing purposes. It makes it seem like an exciting game from the future. Uh, also, it's so it lines up with the financial year. That runs from July 1 to June 30, which is the period of time used for calculating financial reports and tax returns and so forth. Mm -hmm. And also, it's because most of the game's shelf life will predominantly be available throughout the following year. Oh, really? Really. Oh, OK, thanks. Bye. Oh, you're... Well... I guess that answers that. And yes, we do usually review Just Dance games and you can find our old review on our website. On that note though, we're out of time for this week, but if you'd like to ask us something, then you can go here and send in your question. Should we just dance back to studio? Oh yeah. Yeah, they were questions. questions. Yeah. yeah. Alright guys, let's go back. Back to the time of the NES and the SNES consoles. In those days, there was a particular style of RPG developed in Japan that put you in control of a small party of heroes and sent you off on a grand and emotional quest. It was those early Final Fantasy games that really set the blueprint for the genre. Yeah, and now fans of those games are in the industry making games of their own. Like I Am Setsuna. This is a love letter to those old RPGs, from the style of storytelling to the semi-real-time monster battles. <laughs> the story focuses on the character of Setsuna, a girl who is resigned to her fate of trading her life for the safety of her village. According to ancient custom, it's a necessary ritual to keep the monsters at bay. And so she sets out to complete the ritual with a few guardians in tow. And this is your party. It's a cast of heroes that grows as you travel the land and meet all sorts of oddball characters. But you can only have three characters equipped at any one time, so the rest is kind of live in the game's menu until you use them. The combination of characters you choose will really impact how the combat plays out. But before we talk about the combat system, I just want to say how much I loved this game's snowy setting. The world you explore is frosty and harsh, and I liked the details, like the trails and the snow as you move about, or the reflective ice inside a dark cavern. The graphics are pretty simple, but there is a beauty to it, I thought. I didn't like it as much, Hex. I wasn't a huge fan of the art style overall. But the game is trying to purposely be retro, so I think in some ways it was always going to be a bit handicapped by that old-style top-down look. 
While the whiff of nostalgia will be quite strong for older gamers, those new to this style of RPG will have to learn how an ATB battle system works. ATB stands for Active Time Battle, which means each character needs to wait for their ATB gauge to fill before they can act. Whether that be to strike out with an attack, or to just drink a potion to restore some health. A clever way the game makes this even more interesting is that you can choose not to take an action and let your ATB gauge fill up for a second or third time. And this grants an added charge to your next move for bonus damage or magical effects. And then on top of that, you can let multiple characters reach full charge at the same time. This lets you perform combo attacks where characters combine their powers to deal even more damage. All of this gives you a lot to think about in battles, and it makes the combat the most satisfying part of this game. Also, Bajo, those alternate party characters you can swap into your party all have their own unique powers too. Uh, so you can experiment in different party combinations to find a balance of melee and magic that suits your own style. Outside of the combat, I didn't find the journey or exploration from town to town that interesting. The world map feels a bit barren and you get access to locations in a very linear way. I wanted more puzzles or areas that were dangerous to explore until you leveled up a bit. Well, I actually liked that it was more focused because the game sticks to telling you its melancholy story rather than letting you get sidetracked for hours and then forgetting what the next step in the main quest is. And perhaps there could have been a few less dead ends on the world map, I agree with that, but I found the pace of the game just right. I personally had to turn off the game's piano soundtrack. It was nice at first, but it becomes progressively so repetitive with the same loop over and over and over in combat. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with your musical observation, Darren. That piano track gets grating over time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what are you giving it overall, Bajo? Well, I like what they're trying to do here, and I thought they did some really interesting things with the combat, but overall, it just feels really dated to me, and I didn't have a great time. So I'm giving it two and a half out of five rubber chickens. Oh, I think I liked it a lot more than you. I was really won over by the characters and the atmosphere, and it was such a sad story. I just had to see it through to the end. I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Well, we're just about at the end of another show, but before we go, Darren, please, we must have the answer to your challenge. Affirmative. At the start of the show, I asked you this. What are the names of the three team leaders in Pokemon Go? And the answers are... Candela, Blanche and Spark. Yes, Candela is Valor, Blanche is Mystic and Spark is Instinct. That's right, Hex. Ah, you did indeed catch them all, Hex. <laughs> Next week on the show, we explore the underwater world of Abzu. Oh, I'm really excited about that one. It's very similar to Journey, one of my favourite games of all time, except it's set under the sea. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Bantu out. Darren out. Hey, guys, would you ever consider living under the sea? Uh, yes, if I could ride a giant seahorse. Oh, nice. What about you, Darren? Oh, I love exploring the ocean depths. All the creatures down there, they have bioluminescence. Mm. Oh, oh, the water is a little corrosive, though. Right. What about you, Bacha? Yeah, I hear they have great schools down there. But I think it's a lot of pressure as well. Oh, School's official oh, pressure of the water. Oh, uh, yeah. Well done. I also oh. like seafood. <laughs>